There isn't an echo. It's good. It's okay. <laughs> good. So we are entering the uh, last part of a, uh, the sessions of this day with the presentation from the members of a, uh, the scientific committee. And first of all, I would like to introduce a, a Professor Marco Armand Marsan. A, a very difficult to summarize such a broad career. I think that a, uh, everyone is familiar with a, uh, Marco brought a, a set of a, research activities, contributions. I guess that most of us uh, has uh, cited his work, so I will not go into these details. I will just say that uh, Marco is a fellow of the IEEE. He is a member of the Academia Europea and uh, of the Turin Academy of Science. He was named, and sorry for the pronunciation, maybe uh, Anna, you can help me here, Commandatore of the Ordine of Almerito della Repubblica Italiana by the President of Italy in January 2006. And the last thing I picked from his very broad CV is that uh, Marco uh, served as a vice rector of research, innovation, and technology transfer at the Politecnico di Torino from 2002 to 2009. And this is, of course, most than relevant for the type of things we are doing at Glinks. So, Marco, again, thank you very, very much for having accepted to be a member of a, uh, this committee and for being here for this talk. So, the floor is yours. Thanks, Daniel. Uh... Thank you for having me uh, here today, and thanks for inviting me to join uh, uh, the Scientific Committee of Links. I'm extremely honored. Uh, actually, I feel out of place with so many uh, very famous and prominent researchers. So uh, I'll uh, try to do my best, but don't expect too much, especially those who know me uh, know what I'm talking about. So let me try to share my screen. Uh, share screen here. Uh, OK. Can you see my slides? Yes. I'm trying to make them full screen. Can you see them full screen now? Perfect. Okay, very good. So let's go. Um, the title of my talk today is Queuing Models of Radio Access Networks Offering Streaming and Elastic Services. And uh, this is joint work with uh, uh, my longtime colleague, Michela Meo, that uh, I'm sure many of you know, and with Professor Matteo Sereno, from the Department of Computer Science of the University of Turin, uh, who is uh, uh, more in uh, uh, performance evaluation than networking. And at some point, I'll cite another colleague uh, with whom uh, we are working uh, on uh, uh, some new stuff for which uh, I'll give you some hints. Uh, now, what is the motivation of, for this work? Well, uh, we all know that um, uh, mobile traffic uh, keeps uh, growing at uh, uh, a very fast pace, uh, even more than usual uh, now with uh, the uh, pandemic. Uh, we had to move online uh, most of our uh, activities. Uh, both teaching, meetings, uh, whatever. Uh, today, today is an example of uh, what we are forced uh, to do instead of having a chance of uh, being in, uh, in uh, Paris, uh, we have to connect from home, which is quite sad, but hopefully we, we will start uh, uh, moving again soon. And um, we, we all know that uh, uh, with the, the, the many technological progresses that we have witnessed uh, over the different generations of mobile networks, uh, uh, still uh, the um, largest part, uh, by far the largest part of the capacity increase is due to network densification. Network densification with uh, increasing number of cells and uh, uh, more recently with the overlay of uh, uh, small cells uh, to cover portions of macro cells, which brings to uh, 
the architectures, the radio access network architectures that uh, uh, are often called uh, heterogeneous networks in the literature, HETNETs uh, for short. And uh, <clears throat> we started this work um, uh, by request of um, a large Italian tower operator. And uh, the, the question that uh, the tower operator was asking us is, uh, uh, well, okay, we have these uh, uh, high towers with uh, uh, many macro cells uh, in the order of tens of thousands to cover uh, a country like Italy, which is not uh, so enormous, but uh, that's more or less uh, uh, the numbers. And uh, the, the question that they had is, we know that we have to deploy small cells, but uh, uh, where should we put small cells? Uh, uh, how big should we, should we uh, cover an area with, uh, with the small cell? Uh, how much capacity uh, are we supposed uh, to devote uh, to, to this small cell? And how much of an improvement uh, can we expect uh, to uh, achieve uh, by, uh, by adding uh, a, uh, a small cell within a macro cell area. And uh, we started this work, and actually we started this work um, by looking uh, first um, at the case of uh, only streaming traffic. Uh, and streaming traffic is, uh, or at least I'm using the name streaming or inelastic, uh, uh, for those services which uh, required uh, a, a fixed rate, uh, what uh, some years ago we were calling fixed bitrate services or constant bitrate services. Uh, so you, you need um, a, a given rate, uh, which here I called R sub I, where R sub I stands for a rate of the inelastic service and they need this rate for a given period of time. Uh, this, uh, this is the typical uh, circuit-like requirement where uh, you, you establish a call and for the whole duration of the call, the service needs uh, a, a given data rate. Uh, so we started analyzing uh, this, uh, this type of services and uh, we got some uh, sort of uh, results uh, then uh, then the, uh, the tower operator said, okay, but not all traffic is like this. We, we also have uh, uh, a, an important portion of traffic, uh, which, uh, which is elastic. Uh, and uh, by, by elastic, we mean uh, the transfer of, uh, uh, let's call it a file, then this file uh, could, be, could be a portion of, web, of a web page, could be an email, could be, something which is actually downloaded at uh, the maximum uh, possible data rate. And uh, uh, the service duration, of course, depends on the data rate because you have a fixed amount of data to transfer and uh, uh, the uh, service completion occurs faster if you transfer at a high data rate and slower if uh, uh, you are serving at uh, a low data rate. Um, and we studied the case of uh, purely elastic services and we got results which are uh, fairly different from, from the case of streaming. And so at that point, uh, uh, the question obviously arose, uh, what happens if we have a mix of these, uh, of these two types of services? Um, so what happens if on top of the bandwidth used by the streaming services, we have elastic services which uh, equally share the remaining bandwidth, uh, the bandwidth which is not used by uh, streaming services. Uh, and uh, uh, we imagine that uh, uh, there is a minimum data rate uh, which uh, uh, the elastic, uh, each elastic service requires. Uh, if, if you don't have this minimum data rate to allocate, uh, you are rejecting uh, the elastic service request uh, uh, much uh, like if you don't have the uh, data rate RI, which is necessary to serve uh, a, a streaming services, you reject the request for a new inelastic service request. Uh, 
uh, pay attention that uh, in the first case, the uh, behavior is um, uh, like a classical uh, queuing model that we know uh, is, uh, is a, a multi-server uh, a multi server queue, uh, an MMKK if K is the maximum number of uh, simultaneous services that you admit. And uh, we know that uh, this queue is typically insensitive to uh, service time distributions. So we can speak of an MGKK, uh, of an MGKK uh, queue. Whereas uh, if we look purely at elastic services, what happens is that uh, uh, we uh, essentially have a model which is a processor sharing queue. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, um, having uh, together uh, streaming and elastic services, uh, elastic services see uh, a, a processor sharing queue with a capacity, with a service capacity, which is modulated by the number of uh, uh, streaming services which are in progress. Okay, this environment, uh, this, uh, this setting is not new. It has been studied in the literature in several papers. Uh, here, uh, here I put some references in case anybody is interested. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a paper by Jim Roberts in 2001. There are work by Boxma and uh, his co-authors. There are works by... Uh, Borst um, and uh, different things. Uh, interestingly, um, this is not a, a, a closed area of research because as you see, uh, the most recent paper I uh, could uh, uh, find in the literature is uh, of uh, 2021. So there is still work going on in this area. Interestingly, uh, all of these references that, uh, that you see here uh, in these two slides um, uh, don't incorporate uh, uh, user mobility. Uh, uh, we could find only one paper in the literature which incorporates uh, user mobility, uh, which is this one in uh, 2010. And uh, uh, normally these papers uh, are looking at uh, either admission control or scheduling, uh, often referring to a, a wired context, in some cases to a wireless context, but disregarding the impact of, uh, of user mobility. Uh, mobility is important instead. Uh, why? Well, because if, uh, if you consider an environment where you have a macro cell, uh, which uh, here we call M, and uh, the quantities which refer to the macro cell will have uh, a subscript M, and the small cell that we call S, and uh, subscript, uh, of course, will be S in the case of the small cell. Uh, typically, um, have very different sizes. Uh, a, a typical radius for a macro cell is in the order of one kilometer. A typical radius for a small cell is on the order of uh, 100 meters. So, so what happens is that uh, um, the, the, um, the presence time for user equipment within a cell are fairly different. Uh, you can expect uh, an order of magnitude uh, between the two. Um, we assume two important things. That uh, is uh, that all user equipments uh, under uh, the small cell coverage are associated with the small cell. Uh, otherwise, why are you putting a small cell there? And that at steady state, um, uh, the end overflows in and out uh, of a cell balance. Uh, and here you see uh, an equation which impacts user uh, density, the area, and uh, the, the rate of mobility. And this relates uh, the mobility rates uh, uh, in and out of, uh, of the small cell and of the macro cell. So you get, uh, you get a queuing model like this one. Uh, and this one, uh, well, you have uh, uh, 
two types of services, inelastic services and elastic services. You have uh, uh, exogenous arrivals. I hope you can see my pointer. Maybe I am able to, uh, let's see. Yes, okay. Like this, I hope you see my pointer better. So you have uh, different types of arrivals. This is um, uh, the arrival rate for calls that are generated uh, within the cell. This is a model that applies both to the macro and to the small cell. Then we can construct a queuing network by uh, plugging uh, several of, of these queues uh, uh, to each other. <laughs> so this is the uh, endogenous traffic. So these are the new call requests which are generated within the cell, the black ones, which can be, can be rejected. Uh, so we can have losses both for inelastic and elastic. And uh, the, the red arrows here with, uh, with the rate gamma i and gamma e, uh, gamma i is for inelastic and gamma e is for elastic. These are incoming endovers. Uh, and of course you can have losses there as well. Uh, those uh, uh, service requests that go uh, in, in, into service, uh, receive a service for a given time, uh, but maybe the service is interrupted because of mobility. And in fact, here you see this mu h is the rate at which uh, uh, customer leave the queue because of mobility, whereas this mu i is the rate at which customers leave uh, because of service completion. And of course, this is the multi-server queue part. And here, what you observe is that uh, uh, both uh, the mobility and the service rates are multiplied by the number of active uh, uh, services. In the elastic case, what happens uh, is that you have the mobility component again. Uh, and we assume that users move with the same parameter regardless of the fact that they are uh, either uh, asking for an inelastic or an elastic service. Um, but uh, the uh, service rate uh, for elastic services is uh, uh, whatever capacity remains after you subtract the capacity which is used by uh, inelastic services. Uh, and this uh, phi E is the inverse <coughs> of <coughs> the average um, uh, file size that you have to transmit uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with an elastic service. Uh, so you have this queue um, with the two types of services. Uh, you know very well what is the solution for uh, the inelastic part. You know very well what is the solution for the elastic part. If you take them separately, uh, which means if uh, you decide a priori that uh, a given fraction X of the capacity is allocated for inelastic services and the remaining uh, one minus X is uh, allocated to elastic services. So in that case, uh, the system becomes practically trivial because you already have results. But if uh, uh, resources are shared, then what happens is that the steady state solution of the queue is not product form in general. So you cannot multiply the marginal distributions that you obtain for inelastic and elastic services to obtain the joint limiting probability distribution. There are parameter combinations for which uh, the uh, product of the marginal gives a very good approximation of the joint probability function, but there are also parameter combinations for which the, um, the uh, joint uh, PDF is uh, uh, significantly different from the product. So you have to be careful uh, about what you're doing. A note on the relevance of mobility. Uh, well, especially for elastic traffic, mobility is extremely important. Why? Uh, 
Well, because um, if um, the, the nominal load of the elastic services is low, so if you have a lot of capacity to serve elastic services, uh, what happens is that uh, the elastic services see a processor sharing regime. Uh, because most of them uh, complete uh, quickly before the user moves out of the cell. On the contrary, when uh, the load is high, so you have little bandwidth, the service of uh, uh, elastic uh, uh, services becomes slow. And so it's uh, quite uh, uh, likely that uh, elastic services are not completed, uh, which means that this component here, which is a multi-server component, uh, dominates. And so whenever you have uh, low bandwidth for this part of the uh, server, uh, then uh, the processor sharing behavior does not apply anymore you uh, tend to have uh, a multi-server or, or well, a multi-server multi behavior. Mm -hmm. So the behavior of this queue is uh, uh, kind of complex and not always predictable. Of course, if uh, you want to study the uh, multi-cell case, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to do it. Uh, this is the case of a macro and a small cell and combining the macro and the small cell uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, almost trivial because you just have to plug together with some attention the, um, the uh, two, uh, two versions of the queue uh, with, uh, uh, with a little bit of care because uh, here uh, you see uh, the, you have to account for the fact that uh, at the border of the macro cell you can have incoming and and, go, and outgoing and overs with other cells, whereas if the small cell is entirely incorporated within the macro cell coverage area, then uh, you do not uh, need uh, uh, to uh, account for handovers in and out uh, uh, except uh, for uh, for the macro cell. Uh, and this, these green arrows here, uh, incoming and outgoing, uh, are exactly the endovers uh, towards other macro cells, uh, which uh, uh, are present only for uh, uh, for cell M. So, uh, and this has to be computed using a fixed point approximation, because again, you assume that incoming and outgoing endovers balance, uh, but uh, but you have to compute uh, what goes out, equate it to what comes in and, and iterate. So the whole thing is the, uh, not trivial in terms of uh, overall behavior, but uh, if you uh, have uh, uh, exponential assumptions, then of course, all of this uh, uh, boils down to a Markov chain, uh, a Markov chain that uh, uh, in the case of the single cell, uh, and in the case in which you have only one class of uh, uh, services for both inelastic and elastic, uh, then uh, you have only two parameters, which is number of inelastic and number of elastic services in progress. If you have two cells, uh, then uh, you need uh, the number of inelastics for both macro and small and the number of elastic for macro and small. Um, the solution uh, may become critical in terms of state space size uh, when you grow the number of cells that you want to consider uh, in, uh, in one shot, because of course, uh, uh, well, depends. Depends what you are considering, but uh, if, uh, if you are talking about 4G cells, uh, then uh, the maximum number of services in progress is of the order of a uh, uh, few hundreds. Uh, if you're talking about 5G, uh, it becomes a problem because it uh, grows to a few thousands. Uh, you cannot study systems which are too big, but at least in principle, the analysis through a Markov chain is, is not so complicated. And, uh, um, and once you have the solution of the Markov chain, you can compute many, uh, many performance indicators. Uh, for example, the loss probability, uh, 
for inelastic, for elastic, for the macro, for the small cell, the average number of active uh, uh, streaming and elastic services uh, for the macro, for the small cell. Uh, you, you can compute uh, uh, a lot of things. Mm. Uh, the fact that uh, um, the uh, state space size can grow extremely large, uh, makes you uh, desire uh, some sort of product form. Uh, and this is what uh, we are currently working on uh, right now. Uh, the, most of what I'm presenting today is contained in a paper that was recently, uh, recently presented at uh, uh, WOWMAM this month. Uh, if um, if you uh, by any chance want to read the paper, just drop me a line. I will send you the PDF. Um, we uh, but that, that that is just purely continuous time Markov chain analysis. We are working now on uh, uh, these uh, issues of insensitivity and uh, uh, product form. Product form is interesting to go to a larger system and insensitivity is interesting to get out of the uh, limitations uh, uh, due to exponential assumptions. Um, so it turns out that product form for single cell uh, actually uh, exists uh, provided uh, you um, go away from uh, uh, Poisson arrivals. Mm. Uh, you need uh, arrival rates uh, uh, of elastic services to depend uh, on uh, available bandwidth, which means the more bandwidth you have, uh, the more uh, requests uh, you can accept. Uh, but when bandwidth becomes scarce, uh, uh, you should uh, reduce uh, uh, the rate of uh, requests for uh, uh, for uh, uh, elastic services, uh, which is not totally crazy because uh, uh, you have network management on top, and of course your network manager is trying to avoid congestion, and uh, assuming that uh, you you are trying to encourage. Uh, end user association to cells where you have a lot of bandwidth. Uh, uh, and on the other uh, side, the discourage uh, associations when bandwidth becomes scarce can make, uh, can make sense. And after all, we normally take Poisson arrivals, but, uh, but we know that Poisson arrivals are, are an abstraction. So with a different abstraction, uh, you, can, uh, you can obtain product form in the case of single cell. Uh, in the case of multi-cell, uh, uh, you can also get product form. In this case, what uh, disturbs you are blocking and, uh, uh, and you can uh, still uh, uh, manage to, to have product form uh, if in addition to the condition which is necessary for having product form for the single cell, you assume that uh, whenever a cell does not have resources rather than blocking, uh, uh, what you do is uh, you skip the queue and go to the next one, which again is not completely crazy because if you are uh, trying to end over to a cell uh, which does not have resources for you, maybe you try to move to another cell in the vicinity. So, uh, uh, so um, I don't know, these, uh, these are uh, modeling assumptions that uh, uh, that can be more or less reasonable depending on the, the actual physical context in which you are. And insensitivity uh, is uh, provable, uh, but uh, only if uh, you do not have mobility or uh, possibly, we're still working on this, so I'm not so sure about what I'm saying, also for uh, some uh, very special cases of mobility which are probably uh, rather unrealistic. So um, some results, uh, let's see. Uh, well, um, yeah, some minutes I should also, or I still have. So some results, um, we are taking here a cell uh, with capacity 50 megabit, a macro with capacity 50 megabit per second. 
uh, we, we are going to vary the uh, size, uh, the capacity of the small cell, but if I don't say anything, also the small cell has uh, uh, 50 megabit per second capacity. The area of the macro cell uh, is what corresponds to a radius of one kilometer. Uh, half a megabit per second is what you need for inelastic traffic. Three minutes is uh, the average uh, uh, service time for inelastic. Uh, 300 kilobit uh, per second is uh, the minimum rate for elastic. And uh, the average file that you need to transfer uh, with an elastic service is uh, uh, 100 megabit. And um, these are the curves that you get for loss probability in elastic and elastic. In elastic are the solid curves. Elastic are the dashed curves. Uh, red means uh, um, two minutes uh, average uh, uh, permanence time in the cell. And, uh, um, in, in, and uh, uh, the black uh, curves are um, 10 minutes average time in the uh, macro cell. Uh, so here you see some things which are uh, which are interesting, and uh, uh, the first thing that you see is that uh, uh, there is a difference in slope here, uh, uh, which uh, differentiates the curves with uh, uh, slow mobility black and fast mobility red. And you see that uh, mobility helps because uh, uh, thanks to mobility, you have a higher chance of uh, uh, going into the small cell and so reducing the, um, uh, the loss probability within the macro cell. Uh, by the way, the small cell loss probabilities are the one here in the inset. Uh, here in the bigger picture, you have uh, uh, the loss probabilities for the macro cell. And the other thing that you see is that, uh, uh, well, keep in mind that if you have one kilometer and 100, meter, uh, 100 meters ready, uh, then this ratio, which is the ratio of the area of the small cell with respect to the area of the macro cell uh, would be 1%. So you would be uh, very close to here. Uh, and if you are very close to here, then uh, the, uh, the, it's like not having the small cell. Mm. Uh, so uh, in order uh, to achieve the advantage of uh, the small cell, which means bringing down uh, these loss probability values, you need, uh, uh, you need the small cells which are not that small. Huh? Uh, so you need the small cells of uh, uh, reasonably large size. And this is uh, uh, first message. Second message, what about capacity? Uh, what, uh, what happens if I vary the small cell capacity? Remember that uh, the macro cell has 50 megabit per second. Here you have the megabits per second in the uh, small cell. Uh, and this, uh, these are the curves for different ratios of uh, uh, the area of the small cell to the area of the macro cell. Uh, and this is 10%, uh, 30%, uh, 50%. 50% uh, means that uh, the macro cell and the small cell are covering the same area because A is the total area, AS is the area of the small cell. So if AS over A is 0.5, this means that the small cell uh, is not small. The, the small cell is just uh, another macro cell which takes uh, half of the area uh, of the uh, previously existing macro cell. And, uh, and what you see here uh, is that uh, uh, if the small cell is small, uh, there is no point of putting such uh, a, a large capacity. Uh? If your target is uh, uh, 10 to the minus three blocking probability, you see that, uh, well, maybe eight megabit per second are all you need. Uh, and uh, um, and if, you, if you want uh, to put, uh, uh, to deploy uh, 
uh, a large capacity in the small cell, then you need a small cell which has a reasonably large size. Otherwise, uh, otherwise uh, it, uh, it is not useful. Uh, well, there are glitches like like this one. Uh, when uh, when capacity is small, what happens is that uh, uh, is that uh, here this is for thirty percent of the area covered by the small cell. Initially, if you have an increase, then you have a decrease. But but this is irrelevant. I mean, you are you are at uh, ten to the minus nine blocking probability. So essentially, who cares? As regards elastic services, uh, what is the average data rate that you get for elastic services? Well, you see that um, uh, if um, uh, the small cell is small, then uh, uh, you have um, uh, in the macro cells uh, several uh, elastic traffics uh, with uh, um, with uh, um, uh, low quality uh, and uh, oops sorry and uh, in the small cells uh, you have only a few connections but uh, with very high quality so the interesting thing is that uh, you should aim for zones where uh, the macro cell and the small cell uh, more or less have uh, um, uh, similar size, uh, and in this case, they have similar capacity, uh, so that the average rate for elastic traffic remains good. And the last result I'm showing you is kind of obvious. Of course, uh, um, there can be places where you have a hotspot, which means that the traffic per unit area is larger than in the rest uh, of the macro cell. And here, what you see, this, this factor we call A, uh, A is the amplification factor for uh, uh, the traffic per unit area that you get uh, in the small cell. And uh, of course, uh, uh, by, increasing, uh, by increasing A, uh, what happens is that uh, uh, the performance gets better. Look at the performance of the macro cell if you want to improve the performance of the macro cell, of course, uh, you should find a position in which uh, you have a peak of traffic and that is the place where you want to place uh, your, your small cell. Uh, this is kind of obvious. So conclusions, uh, um, provided uh, your state space is not too big, uh, it is possible to study these uh, head net configurations uh, with the fairly simple models. Uh, small cells can be effective uh, provided uh, they are not too small and uh, they cover traffic hotspots. And uh, uh, an important message, pay attention that the interplay between elastic and streaming services is uh, uh, heavily influenced by uh, the mobility characteristic of end users. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer if I can. Thank you very much, Marco. Any questions? Uh, perhaps I have uh, uh, one or two questions. Um, uh, so is there a notion of stability condition for this, uh, for this model? Um, uh, yeah. And is it is it known in, in closed form, in, in explicit form? Um, no, in the sense that uh, uh, we can compute the actual load factor of the system um, only uh, only after solving the Markov chain. I see. If, uh, if your question is, uh, uh, can I immediately write uh, the condition? Well, stability, let me dig out uh, the picture any, uh, here. Um, stability per se is, is not an issue because you have losses when, when the system is overloaded. Uh, uh, uh -huh. it's, it self-regulates because you have losses. Uh. So, uh, so this is stable uh, by, by definition. But uh, if you want uh, to know 
uh, what is uh, the load factor of your system, uh, then, uh, well, I don't know. Um, we were not able to write uh, uh, before getting the solution of the continuous time Markov chain, what is the total load for this queue. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, an another um, more modeling question. So, uh, um, I mean, when a user is far from the base station, uh, be it uh, uh, in the small cell or the macro cell, uh, so it's, its rate will be lower because of the say signal being uh, lower uh, and so is there a way to account for this uh, geometric heterogeneity of of uh, of these uh, service rates um that's for, for, the, yeah, for the elastic uh, traffic at least yeah. uh, well even for uh, even for uh, um even for streaming in fact, I don't know if I mentioned this um, here, uh, because you see, um, sometimes the papers in the literature also include a third class of traffic, which is called adaptive. Mm -hmm. And adaptive traffic um, uh, means a service um, uh, which has a fixed duration, but can have different quality levels. And depending on the quality levels, uh, the amount of uh, uh, bandwidth uh, or, uh, or the amount of bit per second that are allocated uh, to this, uh, to this uh, traffic uh, changes. Uh, so um, yes, uh, uh, that is in the to-do list. Uh, I, I, it's one, one of the extensions that uh, uh, we have uh, on a piece of paper uh, possible things to to work on, but we don't have that all yet. Thank you. Other questions? You're most welcome. If, if anybody has ever worked on these things and has interesting uh, suggestions or references to to suggest. Uh, please let me know either now or send me an email because uh, we are still very actively working on this. We have a question from Jim. I raised my hand in the video, but I think Marco, you probably answered my question. I was going to ask you, actually, for for certain streaming services like video and, and protocols like Dash, it's actually adaptive. It occurs to me you could you could use the same model. I mean, you'd have the same state space. You'd just have different transition probabilities, and you could do the same. You could do the same kind of analysis. And I'm wondering if you thought about whether the qualitative results at the end about large and small sizes and what would just stay the same? Well, uh, in the current work that we are doing, uh, this one on, on product form, uh, we are considering uh, um, the possibility to have different classes, both for uh, elastic and streaming. Uh, so um, you can have many different uh, types of streaming and, uh, uh, and this is a partial answer to the question you are asking because actually um, this, uh, this copes uh, with the possibility of having, for example, video at different levels, but this copes for the possibility of having video at different levels for the entire duration of the video. Whereas what you really would like uh, is that uh, uh, if bandwidth is scarce, uh, you are working at a, a lower data rate. When uh, uh, bandwidth gets more abundant uh, during the same service, uh, you step up your quality and, uh, and that we don't yet have. Uh, that would require the possibility for uh, services to change class. It's probably doable, but we have not done it yet. Marco, just for the record, uh, we, we had uh, a few years ago a very talented uh, PhD student uh, who did a lot of work on Telefon. Her name was Seiton. And uh, I believe she would be happy to try to, to look at what she did and maybe that's what we did. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, very interesting. If you can get, get me a reference uh, or uh, or an entry point, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to uh, pursue this. Thank you. I don't see any other hands, so I will have a couple of questions as well. Uh, Marco, you are supposing that the uh, the uh, input traffic uh, for streaming and the, uh, from Elastic are independent. When you see the way people navigate today, they do both things at the same time. So some, somehow this will introduce a correlation between both traffics, right? Uh, I, of course, I understand the difficulties uh, from the model point of view, but uh, do you think that this will severely impact the results? I mean, about uh, the relationship between the size of the small cell and the regular cell? Um, well, the correct answer should be, I have no clue. Uh, probably, you know, correlation is always a nightmare. So I, I imagine it, uh, uh, it, it can have an impact. Uh, and if it has an impact, uh, it typically has a negative impact. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. The only type of, well, yeah, the only type of correlation that we are envisioning at present uh, is, uh, is this uh, correlation about uh, the fact that uh, arrival rates of elastic services depend on uh, the available bandwidth. But this goes in the opposite direction that you are mentioning, because uh, this says that uh, when I have a lot of bandwidth which is consumed uh, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, streaming, uh, then the amount of requests that I get from Elastic Services goes down. So this is correlation in the other direction. The second question I would have is uh, regarding a slicing that has been introduced with the 5G. Uh -huh. And they, uh, of course, we all know that they, uh, if, if you have good schedulers from statistical multiplexing point of view, putting all the traffic over the same slide will be the best, but we don't have the uh, right schedulers. So do you think that they, uh, the, what is your feeling about slicing? Okay, the, this can very well be applied to slicing uh, in the sense that whether the, whether the resources you are talking about is the resources of a slice, or uh, the entire set of resources of a base station doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you are in the context of slicing, uh, then these, uh, these numbers, which are the numbers of calls, uh, uh, or the numbers of active services of the two types in elastic and elastic uh, is, is probably smaller if you are within a slice. So that helps the modeling. Uh, this in the case that you have isolation between slices. If you do not have isolation between slices, uh, so you have a pool of resources uh, which is shared uh, not only like we have here between elastic and elastic, but is also shared with other slices in the same cell. Uh, it's probably doable, uh, can become kind of messy. But uh, uh, but again, we have not looked into that. Thank you, Marco. Any other questions? Any hand? Let me check. Oops. No, I don't see any raised hand. So, Marco, thank you very, very much. Thank you.